This is The Agent Goldmine, where you'll find real talk, shit talk, and ambition. We're here to build real businesses and be more than your average agent. We want to know what the killers are actually doing within their businesses, the reality of it. All tactical, no fluff. So we're here to find out. Please share and enjoy. Welcome back to The Agent Goldmine. Allie and I are here again for another solo episode. We're going to have a couple of these because we love them. Of course, we love guests, but we really just are obsessed with each other. So today, what we are going to talk about is probably going to be a quicker episode. We're going to talk about marketing. And specifically, what we're going to talk about is my marketing strategy the first time around and what I would do differently if I were starting over today, which is highly applicable because as you guys know from the last episode, I am starting over. So that's what we're going to talk about. And Ali is going to share her marketing lessons learned. And we're going to just have the best time ever as usual. Yeah, that's it. Right, Ali? What else? Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. And this will be applicable to both agents and and broker owners. You know, marketing as for your team or marketing for recruiting, really. I mean, everything is marketing. What what topic do you want to start with? Because I have one in mind. Oh, fuck. Send it. I want to talk about mailers. I want to get this these fucking mailers out the way. And I think we have different opinions on mailers. Yeah. I, yeah. when I first got started, you know, that's when I first got started, the two like marketing efforts are like door knock and mailers. And that's what I had like in the forefront of my mind. I'm like, okay, I can door knock, I can do mailers. And then who knows what else, what, what else I could do online. It's digital is like a whole different beast. And totally. so it's okay. Let me, let me look into the, these mailer things. Let me see what this is about. And I sent my first mailer my my first okay so i got licensed one week later i had a listing and i sent my first mailer two weeks after that so it was like three weeks of me being licensed i sent my first mailer batch it was like 50 five zero not a lot to just the neighboring homes around my listing saying hey we just went on the market i forget what it was i think it was yeah we must have gone on the market then we went on the market this is what we're listing it at blah blah, blah. and then i got two reach outs from that and I was from 50. And I was like, that's amazing. Mar- Hell yeah. I'm going to do these mailers <laughs> forever. Amazing. And then yeah. one turned out to be just like some, you know, they're not interested in selling. They just wanted to talk to somebody. They're older. Mm-hmm. And the other one was also older, but that was probably one of the most difficult conversations that I've ever had to, ta- to have with a client, with a seller client, because his house was even though it was catty corner from my listing was not in any way near the condition of the house that I was selling, which was pristine. And he couldn't, he couldn't understand that. I'm like, Hey, these are the, these are the house, these are the photos from the house right across, like right diagonally from you. And he couldn't, uh, he couldn't see how different his, the condition of his house was. And plus he started lying to me about the not you know, having leads on the house. Anyway, I fired him before we even got started. <laughs> so after that, I was like, you know what? F these mailers. I don't want to do this. It like went from so high to so low because I spent hours at his property only to then talk to attorneys because he was already in collections and just, it was a hot mess. And then now after that, I like, because I think mailers were kind of shoved down my throat by everyone else. Like other realtor media things. Oh, mailers, mailers, mailers. I have like kind of an aversion to mailers. So not only are they expensive, but then like people that are just unreasonable, bored, lonely will reach out to you. And it's just not the highest and best use of my time. Can they work? 1000%. I don't want to make it work. <laughs> so now I tell like anybody that joins our crew, I'm like, you can do mailers if you have a big ass budget. If you are ready and to a lot spend of time to wait money. Yeah. Yes. And then time and have a system to call them back, then go for it. But that's my opinion of mailers. <laughs> what are yours? Because I know that you guys are like, well, I'll, I'll let you talk. We're, we're not going to do mailers, at least not in the beginning. We might do it afterwards. So Drake has done mail. He did direct mail. He probably spent $10,000 in direct mail in Charlotte. So that was a series of months. He probably spent I would probably like a little over three for three months in a row to send out mail because that's the thing too. It's like you send out 50, you know, the, in the, in the real estate investing world, it's like 5,000. 
per month, like 50. Wow. You're not, why would yeah. you even waste your pennies doing that? You know? Yeah. But it's just a little <laughs> different too, where you're like, I said it, if it was personalized to every single name, like maybe whatever, this is a math class. And we did it for three months. We, he, and got like a 0.05% like response rate, which is very, it's low. Normally I think in the investor space, they're aiming for one to 2% response rate from these like 5,000 per month mail campaigns that are going out. So all that to say, I do agree with you. I think that it is expensive. I do. I'll start with it works. Like people are still doing it yeah. and it's talked about widely in the industry for a reason. It does still, it absolutely still works. That being said, it is expensive and it is a commitment for an extended period of time. Depending on who you'll talk to, they'll say minimum of three months, minimum of six months of pouring out letters and money every single month before you start really seeing anything come from it. So all that to say, we're not starting with with mailers. We, (laughs) We do plan, I think, after we have completely blown up everyone's Facebook page here in Lexington. (laughs) They're just like tired of seeing our faces. We'll also probably start hitting them with mail once we are making money down the road. Once we're licensed, (laughs) closing deals, you know, the whole thing. So from the book Ninja Selling, they have a whole chart on there, which I put into my real estate Bible, which I give everyone that joins our crew. It, It literally has every single thought I've ever had about real estate sales. And mailers is the last the lowest converting one or, or not converting, but I like number wise, it's 2000 to one. So for every 2000 pieces of mail that you send, that's where you can expect one transaction and well, everything else is above that. But so I, I'm like kind of surprised that like when I got started, every mailers is just the default. Oh yeah. Door knock, open houses and mailers. And I'm like, all right, well I must do all three. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 I'm not doing that shit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, flip side though, just to debate it slightly, it's oh, yeah. if you get one one deal from two thousand, and if you spend, you know, I don't know how long ordering, which you can do it online from the comfort of your home. You can buy two thousand. You can upload all of the addresses and hit send. So there is that thought too, where it's if you are able to get a deal out of that little amount of effort. And it, it all depends on what's most important to you. Do you care about the sweat? Do you, are you poor? Do you need to like sweat for your business? Do you have the money, but you don't have the time? You know, there's just, okay. And now my devil's, ad, yeah. devil's advocate is done. Allie. <laughs> I love it. I love a good devil's advocate. Okay. You mentioned online. Do you want to go there? Dude, I can't stop looking at my receding hairline. It's so bad. <laughs> Guys, uh, don't if go to YouTube. you're not watching on YouTube. For sure. Don't please go, go on YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> Comment. <laughs> the other thing oh, is to normally turn on a light above so you can see like my hair color is different from this black background, but I forgot to do it. So it's like all you can see is my face and the receding hairline. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I have it too. So if you want to go oh. on YouTube, we we got it. We got it on the sides. Weird and that's the military bun shit. That, oh, <laughs> is that why? I think you're probably right. Yes. 100% because I used to I used to braid my hair, you know, braid a little strand in the front and it was always just tugging and tugging. Plus, you were in gymnastics. Uh, I'm surprised you don't have more of a receding okay. hairline. You can, you're wearing a bun okay, right now. Sure. <laughs> I yeah. can't do it anymore. It's hard on your scalp. Okay. I do. I feel it. I actually do. I feel it pulling my hair out. <sighs> okay. You were saying something. You were asking about marketing. Maybe we were talking about marketing. Yeah. What other, what other topic? So we're done. We're done with mailers. What other category? Do you want to go into it? Well, I would like to share what I did the first time around and mm-hmm. what result it happened, just because I think that it might be helpful for people who may be doing the strategy that I did the first time around. And I'll give you a little, what is it? Spoiler on what fucking happens when you do it this way. Okay. So the first time around, I targeted investors. I was like, I'm an investor. I'm also military. That's my target audience. Because that makes sense. Normally, like you are your target audience. It makes it makes yeah. sense because you can get into their psyche and all the things. But by doing that, so I was on bigger pockets and not I'm not talking about the podcast. I'm talking about I was in the forums and like trying to work with investors. I was started up Pints of Properties, which is a real estate investors meetup. I got on social media and was sharing all of my deals, investing, investing. Um, what else did I do? You get my point. By doing that, what I attracted was 
military and investors. Whoa. <laughs> Okay. I wonder why. So the, the, <laughs> my, the, the point is the universe is a boomerang. So if you're not thinking like what you put out, you will receive back. And so if you're not strategically thinking about, oh shit, like I'm talking about investors, therefore investing, therefore I will in- attract investors. What will that life look like? Well, I'll tell you what it looks like. Working with investors who see you do awesome deals and you share it online, want the same deals. So they want to pay pennies on a dollar for a property. They want to as cheap as possible. They're pinch- and normally they're new because everyone wants to be an investor. And from that newbie investor pool, maybe one out of a hundred, not even fucking kidding you. One out of a hundred are yeah. awesome. Maybe five out of a hundred will close on something. But that's a lot of conversations yeah. and that's a lot of because each one is so much of a fucking time suck. Even though you're like, go educate yourself, listen to these podcasts, read these books, like they're all still, for the most part, want you to handhold them through their first transaction don't take ownership anyway what it also does so that's a huge time suck it also brings you a pool of people who want very inexpensive properties which leads to inexpensive commission rates and then when you're like i have to get paid more than a thousand dollars on this closing or else like i can't do it so there's this thing called a buyer's premium now you're charging you're asking your buyers to come out of pocket which actually we're good practice because we're about to gnar that shit up here in july but yeah, so that that is what I did. Okay. And that's really my point about just be conscious of what you're putting out into the universe because you will attract that. What are your thoughts on that, Ellie? Yo, real quick. This podcast is not free. Cost of admission is sharing with a buddy who benefit or throwing it on your Instagram story. I guess we'll reshare that shit. 100%. When I, when I first joined, I, I also thought I was going to work with investors because I am an investor first. And I was putting in my own personal investing stuff like out on social media and, and guess who I was attracting, you know, I was attracting other, uh, like you said, uh, want to be investors, like people that still have not even closed now. And I've been licensed for uh, almost like two and a half, three years, almost three years. And it's just, I spent so many hours with people that were like, Hey, I want to buy. And then we would go over their buy criteria, you know, their buy box. And then we find properties that were on the market, and then they would get cold feet and they wouldn't pull the trigger. And you can only do that for so long. It was charity work. And I don't, I can't, charity, do, yeah. I can't survive yeah. off charity work. So, so I stopped, like, I stopped putting anything about my investing stuff online. Like, you will not see any of my investing shit unless I'm talking about the shred method. With, I mean, for years, I stopped putting that shit out. So people like, even though I'm an investor first, I keep that shit silent, you know? And yes, I'm saying this on this podcast, but this is to other agents and not clients. So, and that's uh, one of the reasons actually like why I stepped down of from Investify being the the co-host with Craig Kurloff. So, because that that's who I was attracting more is other first time investors that needed handholding. We're almost there. We're going to write the offer or we do write the offer and they back out because they're scared. And I just, I can't survive off that. So. I stopped. And instead, I just focus on other people, you know, because every person, no matter who you are, you're, you have, you're more than one, you're involved in more than one. It's like a Venn diagram, but like multiple Venn diagrams. Like you have every single activity that you're part of, every single hobby that you like doing. I had just full focus, like just focused on investing. And then, and after that, I, I started tapping into the other bubble of my Venn diagram, which is military and people that are military and want to buy are going to buy, they're going to sell. And that was also my people. You know, if I were involved in like karate or if I were a mom or if I were to go grocery shopping, like literally all these different bubbles you can be a part of, you just, you don't have to focus on what you think is what comes to mind first. If that makes sense. Totally. Totes. Okay. Yeah. So that was for sure. And I'm, I'm going to share with you what are, this is wave tops. Allie, don't ask me all the week. I mean, you can ask, I just don't know them yet because I haven't looked it yet, <laughs> but this is the plan for round two. Okay. So, and this is a, this is a Shelby and Drake plan combined to combine our interests into one area because we're, or one of our goals is like life by design. You talked about, you know, paying the bills and all the things. Like we are at a place luckily where like bills are paid you know, passive, like we've built, built the life where we don't have to worry about survival. And so this time around, we are able to build it in a way where we can just be happy. Anyway, our plan is we're going to connect with, okay, actually, let me back up one. 
So the goal is to build a repeatable process that's scalable with the ability to track results, tech forward, leverage heavy, and is sustainable for the long term. And we plan on doing that by connecting with builders, ideally new construction builders, developers within the Lexington area in a price point of high. I, I say a million, but I just pulled that on my ass because I don't even have access to MLS to pull. Technically, I didn't know this, but I learned the other day that luxury means the top five to 10% of a price point in each market. I didn't know that. So dude, right? I, I heard some dude say that the other day and I was like, wow, okay. So once we have our MLS access, then we're going to pull it and identify like actually what is a realistic price point because I don't even know how many million dollar homes there are in Lexington. Like research has to happen first. That being said, higher price point in builders and or listing agents of these beautiful homes because I want to market a beautiful home. I have sold way too many $40,000 houses in my day. <laughs> we are going for a beautiful visually and proud of the product. But I'm going to go to, we're going to go to the builders and listing agents and we're going to be like, Hey, we want to market your property for you and create gorgeous content of these beautiful homes in the form of like reels, like short term comment, you know, those like home tours that you see where people like the agents are really crushing and doing home tours. So we're going to do home tours and eventually YouTube shout out Sam Cottle, you know, mm-hmm. and shout out Ali. You guys are an inspiration when it comes to YouTube. But anyway, so we're, we have this beautiful product. We're going to market it for them, creating the gorgeous content. And then we're going to run ads on that content. So we're going to push these beautiful homes in front of the people of Lexington. When people click and they go to our website, then we are going to retarget. So even if they don't fill in their contact and they go click on our website, we're going to capture them and then retarget them with brands, ads for branding, like brand, God, fuck words. Basically ads that are brand building, not like a specific call to action, not selling a specific thing, but it's like testimonials or, you know, information about us as a brand. Because the intent is that the people of Lexington are like, wow, Five Pillars is everywhere. Who are these guys? They are literally everywhere. And then through that over time, this is, you know, through capturing through, through the funnel, we will enter their psyche to the extent where they will actually fill out the form if they haven't already. And then once they fill out the form with, you know, the lead magnet, the lead magnet is the beautiful home for more information or whatever our, we decide to actually use as our specific lead magnet. Once we get their contact information, then it's the lead manager, which in the beginning is great, speed to lead and set an appointment. And then I come in, uh, crush the appointment. Yes. Does that make sense? 100%. And according to that ninja selling chart, that is the advertisement calls is 25 to one. So much better than the 2000 to one with mailers. <laughs> Do you know where are like what states or what cities people are moving to Lexington from? from? Yeah. I don't know yet. It's on our list to okay. research. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you asking? If... So when, when you do find out the top couple of cities, are you also going to tar- how do you target them? You know, how do you, how do you get in front of New Jersey, New York before, or is um, it just the website? I'm sure there's a way. That's some Drake nerd shit, but yeah, I'm sure yeah. it's possible. We really should have him yeah. on at some point for him to Let's share do it. his, yeah. But yeah. I want to, so phase two real quick. It, actually, do you have more questions on this phase one of the marketing plan? No. Okay. So phase two is once they're in, so now at this point, we have their contact information. They're in our CRM. We have captured them. We're using Brivity, by the way. But I still, when we're talking about life by design, I love to throw an event. Kyle, you probably know this about me by now. And you are damn good at it. Yeah. Oh, girl, stop. (laughs) Okay, thank you. So I was thinking about like, how can I throw events that are, I love to throw something that's FOMO worthy. Like people are like, oh my God, I have to go. I don't want to miss that. Or after the fact, I cannot believe I missed that. I will be at the next one. So that's after we have these people in our, in our grasp, or this is something that we also could present as an ad, you know, put it pushing out these events. But the ideas at this point is like an open house event. And I say it like that because 
you think of one thing as an open house, but what if you you turned it into a thing where, you know, either depending on the the neighborhood, like food trucks for the lower end or like the really high end, like bring in like this well-known local chef to cook or bring, you know, out food and let people explain it and make it into with a photographer and a videographer and turn it into this induction of an event or open houses. You can align it with holidays. There's so many different ways to layer it with like different holiday events or educational events where it's like, oh, come. And I like the idea of doing it in one of these beautiful houses because we're, we're partnering with builders, right? And we want to showcase their house. So can we throw an event in your house that we're collaborating with local business owners, the builders, the vendors? Because when we take, when we do this event, not only is it going to be amazing, but we're going to have all this content, right? And now when we go on social media and we share the content, we are going to collaborate with every single, like the chef who's well known or the business that brought in the baked goods or I'm fucking help me, whatever, the vendor who is sponsoring that. We're going to tap into every single one of their steers by having this amazing content that they want to collab on that is going to highlight their business as well. And that's how we're going to tap into even more spheres. Does that make sense? the title companies, the attorneys, the, the bug control guy, you know, like literally everybody. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. Were you at that conference? I forget where, but somebody, somebody focuses on this. Let me, let me, um, I'm going to do some research because somebody okay. like focuses on these mega open houses and she doesn't even pay for it. Like she has every, everyone else pays okay. for it. They pay for the marketing. They pay for the, you know, everything related to it. They, they pay for the chef, they pay for whatever it is. So Dude. like, you, it, you could do this for free. A lot of people think yeah. like mega open houses. Oh my gosh, it's going to cost me a fortune, but it doesn't. If you're partnering with other uh, businesses totally. that want to put that on their social media. So yeah, that's cool. Yes. And that's the point. Yeah. Hell yeah. Is it nice? Okay. What's fa- wait, was that phase two? That is phase two. Yeah. There's no phase. Is there a phase three? No, not right now because we really want to focus. That's the thing. Less things, just a few things, do them really well. And then once we're ready, if we need to broaden, we can. But we got a year of just boring shit. Well, not that I'm bored, but you know what I mean. And that is the marketing strategy. We haven't really spoken too much about these mega open houses. Mm -hmm. Let's get some people on that that have done this. And so if you know of anyone, connect us. We're Allie the Agent on Instagram. We're The Shelby Show on Instagram. We would love to benefit everyone else. So thank you so much for listening and see you in the next one. Be a bro and share the show. Thank you for listening. Out of respect for your time, we want to make this show as valuable as possible for you. So if you have any feedback on how we can improve, please let us know. DM us at Allie the Agent and The Shelby Show.